Hello and welcome to Two Car Pros. Today we're going to show you how to replace the water pump for a Ford Explorer 4.6 liter V8 between the years of 2002 and 2005. Before we get started, it's a good idea to unplug the negative terminal on the battery using an 8mm crescent wrench. A socket will work as well. Make sure you're extra careful to never ever touch a tool across the negative and positive battery terminals. This could cause serious bodily harm. Next, we need to check if the engine's cooling system is cool enough to work on, so squeeze the upper radiator hose, and if it gives way, this means the engine is not under pressure, and you can open the petcock at the bottom of the radiator on the passenger side, and we're going to let all the coolant spill out, and we can also remove the uh, radiator or reservoir cap. Next, we can remove these two plastic engine bezels. Uh, this one just kind of pulls off using a clip system. However, this one that's located on top of the engine requires uh, four bolts. Uh, ours only has three, but there are four there. If yours has all the bolts intact, ours just doesn't. It's a quarter inch drive. There's no socket required and a little extension helps as well. With the radiator fluid removed, we can remove the upper radiator hose. Your upper radiator hose might be stuck to your thermostat housing, so it's a good idea to get a mechanics pick or even a flat, uh, decent sized standard screwdriver to kind of separate the bind between the hose and the housing. And we need to remove the radiator's overflow tube and then we can continue removing the upper radiator hose. Next, we need to work on removing this radiator shroud. So this is going to involve removing these AC lines out of these tricky little clips. If you fuss around with them enough and kind of bend them one way or another, eventually they'll give way and you can remove the line. Now we're going to take an 8mm socket and remove the two bolts that hold the radiator shroud in place. Now we can remove said radiator shroud. Now if you don't have the proper tools to hold the uh, water pump pulley, uh, you can also use a large pipe wrench like we have here. You can rent that tool I just showed you at O'Reilly's or any auto parts store for pretty inexpensive or usually free. I highly recommend doing that, but if you don't, you can use a uh, large pipe wrench to kind of hold that pulley while you're removing the radiator fan. Now we can use a big adjustable wrench. I do not know how big the size is. I just use an adjustable wrench and we're going to put it on the radiator fan nut and we're going to grab a hammer and hit it loose. Uh, luckily with this car, it's, it's a normal thread, but on any other car, it could be different. Just pay attention to the fan blade pitch. See, our fan has to rotate that way. Uh, if you're looking at it from the front of the vehicle, it needs to turn anti-clockwise. Uh, to spin, so you use the exact same motion to walk it off the threads. Pretty easy. But pay attention, if your fan pitches the opposite direction, you are going to uh, hammer it to the right, so it's a reverse thread. But we got lucky, it's a normal thread. 
Um, but you know, there might be a silent revision, so do please pay attention to that. And next we can remove the serpentine belt. You're just going to grab a three quarter inch drive, uh, ratchet and remove the tension off the tensioner by pushing downward. Make sure when you're removing the serpentine belt, it's always a good idea if you don't have a diagram uh, to take a photo of how it's routed. Uh, there's, there's plenty of resources online to find that information. And I also believe on this particular car, uh, they put the belt diagram underneath the hood. But again, it's always a good idea to take pictures with your smartphone or something, just so you have a, a, a photo record of what the belt looked like, because this one's kind of tricky. Now we can grab a big standard screwdriver and hold the water pump pulley in place as we begin to remove the bolts that hold it there. Now we can remove the water pump pulley. And we're going to grab a 10 millimeter socket and an extension and remove the four bolts that hold the water pump to the engine block. And now we can close the pet cock on our radiator and move our drain basin to where the water pump is going to be because no matter how much you let flow out of the radiator, there's always going to be some residual coolant in the water pump. So we're just going to move it uh, back into place where it can catch the runoff from the water pump removal. Now your water pump might be stuck on there like ours was, so we're going to grab a hammer and lightly tap it loose. We're just going to kind of jiggle it, wiggle it, and hit it with a hammer uh, until it just kind of falls out. See, no matter how, no matter what you do, there's gonna be there's gonna be coolant runoff. So make sure your catch basin is set up to catch that, and you can dispose of the coolant properly. Next, we're gonna compare our old water pump to our new one to ensure that it's identical. Next, we're going to install the new O-ring on the new water pump, and we can also grab a bit of WD-40 and apply it around the O-ring. This isn't incredibly vital, but it's a good habit to have to ensure there's a proper seal between the engine block and the water pump itself. We can apply the WD-40 and then just spread it around with our finger. You don't need to use too terribly much. Next, we're going to grab a rag or a towel and we're going to clean the mating surface between the engine block and the water pump. Make sure it's nice and clean before you install the water pump. Now we can install our water pump.
Now we can replace our bolts we removed earlier and we're going to torque them to 18 foot pounds. And uh, you're gonna wanna do this in a star pattern, similar to putting on a wheel in a star pattern uh, with lug nuts, but you're just gonna use regular bolts here. Now we can reinstall our water pump pulley, making sure that we torque it to 18 foot-pounds, just like the water pump itself.
Again, we're going to uh, thread the bolts on uh, by hand initially. Sorry, my elbow's kind of in there. It, it's hard to get the shot. It's more hard than you think. And then we're just going to uh, torque them up in a cross pattern. Uh, we can use the standard screwdriver to hold it in place once again, like we did when we removed it. Another cool trick you can do is put the serpentine belt back on and then tighten those bolts with the serpentine belt on because the serpentine belt is going to keep it in place. Here's a great diagram that'll show you what I'm, how I'm trying to route this belt. Uh, I'm sorry if it's not uh, too detailed for you, but I think it explains things a little bit better than the video does. And once I have the serpentine belt on uh, correctly, I found it really easy to route the serpentine belt except for the alternator and then put tension on the spring tensioner and then just kind of loop it back on top of the alternator last. I found that to be the easiest way to do things. And uh, once it's on, you're going to go ahead and manually, you know, use your hand and feel around and make sure that the belt is on all the pulleys correctly because if it's not on the pulleys, it can walk off and then you have another problem that the serpentine belt's not, uh, not on when you start the engine. And that could cause some problems. Next, we're going to replace our radiator fan. So we're just going to uh, walk it back on. Uh, this, luckily, with this fan to walk it on, it's just righty tidy as normal. But again, pay attention to your fan blades pitch. If they look like this, then you can copy us. But if they're the opposite, do the opposite of what we're doing. And when you're tightening the fan back on, make sure the fan nut is spinning because the clutch can be disengaged and the fan nut won't be spinning. See, that, that actually happened to us here where the nut is not spinning and the fan is, you won't accomplish anything and the fan will just fall off. So uh, it's, it's a good idea to get an uh, adjustable wrench and just walk it on manually. Okay, so once it's walked on all the way back, uh, you can get it by hand or with a wrench. We're going to grab the adjustable wrench again and a hammer and we're going to hammer it back onto the threads. You want to make sure this is on nice and snug. You really don't want your fan walking back off your threads right into your radiator. So uh, you're going to want to hit your, the hammer on that wrench uh, pretty hard. Next, we can replace our upper radiator shroud that we removed earlier with those 8mm bolts. Then we need to replace the AC lines that we had to uh, remove earlier by clipping them back into their homes. Now we can replace our overfill line that we removed earlier and our upper radiator hose. This is our overflow hose that we removed earlier and we're just we're just putting it back, no big deal.
Now we need to replace the coolant. I'm using a fancy pants funnel, but any funnel will do, or you can just have a really steady hand that works as well. Uh, this is just looks good on camera and is easy for me to operate uh, as well as operating a camera. I'm gonna use Walmart Super Tech here because it's good for all makes and models and it was pretty inexpensive. It's about $7 a gallon and it works just fine. So what we're going to do is fill our reservoir until it reaches uh, the cold fill line that's between these two lines you will see right here. And you wanna get it right between that level now we can reconnect our battery that we removed earlier. Again, I believe that's an eight millimeter uh, bolt. You're going to screw back on with a wrench or a socket, and we're gonna start the car for a little bit. Once the engine's been running for a little bit, you're gonna notice a drop in coolant, so you're gonna need to add coolant until it is right between those two points once again and then you're gonna let it run for quite a while. As, as long as the engine is running, the thermostat is going to open and this is going to let the coolant explore all kinds of air pockets inside of the engine. So let the engine run and just keep an eye on it. As it goes down, just add some more until it becomes good between those two points that you just saw. Once your engine's nice and hot and you're pretty sure that it's not going to, uh, the thermostat's not gonna open anymore, uh, usually this happens about uh, 10 minutes or so. We can go ahead and remove our funnel and replace our reservoir cap. It's also a good idea to keep an eye on it over the next couple days and see if the level has dropped any. Of course, waiting for the car to become cool before you open the cooling system. Now we can replace the two plastic engine bezels we removed earlier. Again, the uh, top one is just a simple four bolts that use a quarter inch drive to screw in. And this one just sort of snaps back in place. There's no uh, nuts or bolts involved. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please visit twocarpros.com where our online automotive experts are standing by ready to help for free 24-7. Thanks again, and we'll catch you next time.